Thanks for staying with us. Let's go to this conversation now. By Wednesday, any South African already fully vaccinated against COVID-19 will be able to request a mixer booster vaccine to potentially benefit from what has become known as the mix and match approach. Now, this is according to the Department of Health. Now, the department announced that adults, this means people above the age of 18 who have received one dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, will be eligible to receive a booster dose of either the same vaccine or Pfizer after an interval of three months. Let's talk then about this further with Dr. Nicholas Crisp, who's the head of vaccination program at the Department of Health. Dr. Crisp, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Why this decision? Hi, good evening and good evening to the viewers. Well, um, we had originally um, moved our intervals from 21 days to 42 days at the time when we were vaccine constrained. We're no longer vaccine constrained. And we have had quite a lot of uh, anxiety from people who feel that the gap is too long and they know that it is shorter in other countries. So there's been requests for a lot of requests for people to come for uh, vaccination in shorter intervals. So since we have the vaccine and the intervals are shorter elsewhere in the world, the Ministerial Advisory Committee um, advised us that it's quite acceptable to go back to the original intervals and reduce them. That mm. does help us to move the vaccines a bit quicker and it reduces anxiety for those who would like to go and get their, their booster doses. Now, Dr. Crisp, does one need to be fully vaccinated in order to uh, be able to get access to this mixing and matching approach? Yeah, so the, the schedules are that one dose of Johnson & Johnson is regarded as a primary vaccination course. And then uh, one, if one's had that, then 60 days later, you can get either another Johnson & Johnson vaccine or a Pfizer vaccine. If you have had two doses of Pfizer, now you can have them 21 days apart, so not 42 days apart. But if you've had both of them, that is a primary schedule. Then after 90 days, you can go and get a booster dose. It's the same vaccine. It just uh, reminds your body's immune system to uh, produce more immunity. And it's a more long-lasting immunity at that point. Now, some have been saying that, uh, you know, they're concerned around uh, the mixing of vaccines, whereas there's a sense that mixing them, as well, especially for booster shots, could be beneficial in terms of the protection it provides. I wonder, um, is this true at all? Yeah, so the Ministerial Advisory Committee has been following the international literature for months now and has been advising us on what they've seen. We know that people who travel around the world pick up vaccinations in different countries, and mm. they have been vaccinating with different vaccines without any problems at all and with good effect. But there have been more controlled studies done more recently, and we wanted to be certain that these are safe to use and that they are um, giving an, a, an appropriate immune response. And we are very satisfied that the, the data that's been collected and presented tells us that uh, what we call heterologous boosting or the mixing of the vaccines, especially an mRNA vaccine after the AD26 vaccine, which is our, in our cases, Johnson & Johnson, gives very good immune response. So it's, it seems to be an appropriate schedule, and we're very happy we can offer it now. So someone who's concerned should not be concerned, as, from uh, what I'm hearing. No, they should not be concerned. In fact, they should be happy because now it means if you arrive at a vaccination site, it doesn't matter which vaccines they have, uh, they are able to give you a schedule that is going to give you a good immune response. Now, talking about uh, traveling, uh, Dr. Chris, because somebody could say, I got a shot in a different country. Um, can they be able to access, maybe they're fully vaccinated in a different country and now they're in our country. Can they be able to make use of this particular system? So, yes, indeed, there is a schedule that has been provided to vaccination sites. Remember that people who are vaccinated in other countries don't use only these two vaccines of mm. ours. They use many other vaccines. They use the Moderna vaccine, which is also an mRNA, but some have had Sinovac or Sinopharm or uh, other vaccines, in fact, which they have got elsewhere in the world. So they need to present and that card or whatever vaccine certificate is provided by the country where they were vaccinated. And then our vaccinators will have a look at the schedule to see 
which is the appropriate booster to give to those people. So what happens then if somebody wants a booster shot, for example, of J&J instead of a Pfizer uh, shot, but the center where you're going or the vaccination site tells you that they don't have that available? Yeah, well, clearly, if they don't have the vaccine, they can't use it. They may re then refer you to another site. But we would not advise that. We would advise that uh, you should take whatever vaccine they have that's available because you may not get an opportunity or it may be inconvenient for you and then you let it slip and you don't get vaccinated and you allow yourself to be vulnerable. Hmm. All of these different vaccine schedules are not that dissimilar in their impact. And remember, this is laboratory-controlled studies that are done. In the real world, if your body is able to make immunity, it makes immunity. And what you need is the stimulation from the, the vaccine to allow your body to make that immunity. Now, Dr. Crisp, there's been, of course, concerns since the vaccination drive started that there are some who still remain skeptical and do not want to take the vaccine. I wonder um, if things are improving in terms of the uptake on vaccines. Yeah, so since uh, just late in December, we, you know, I think people just got fed up and they tired of the lockdown, tired of masks, tired of vaccination, tired of messages, tired of government, and altogether people have, uh, have not, come, not come in the numbers for vaccination. And that together with the negative messaging from people who don't understand what vaccination is about and are spreading rumors has not helped at all. So we, uh, we are not seeing the numbers that we would like to see. We've been seeing between 63 and 73,000 vaccinations a day. We have the capacity to vaccinate 250,000 vaccinations a day. So we have embarked on the Kiredi campaign last Friday, and we are now uh, um, changing the schedule to make it more convenient for people. Vaccines are available at uh, nearly all the sites that were available that, towards the end of last year. And we're encouraging people to get the right information, ask around, speak to your clinic, speak to your doctor, get uh, yourself to a vaccination site so that you can get vaccinated. All right, Dr. Crisp, hopefully that message really falls in people's ears and they are able to, you know, go for their vaccination. As you say, that's Dr. Nicholas Crisp. He's the head of vaccination program at the Department of Health. Let's give you a recap of the headlines at this hour.